Okay, so smells like absolutely nothing. I was <laughs> going to say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Feels kind of moist. Like my, like my hand is wet. Yeah. No, my hand is... A bit sticky. A bit sticky. Um, it doesn't look appealing, I'm not going to lie. Nope. Uh, and I think we've spoken enough, so let's just go on it's ahead. wide and short. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Christmas special of Girls With Goals. I'm Neve Mar, and I'm joined as ever by Denise Curtin. We are here in the beautiful Palmerstown House estate, which is also home to seasonally, of course, Santa's best train express. Uh, Denise, welcome. We're getting so goddamn festive. I can't even see you over all the presents. I know. I'm really excited by how much gifts we have here. It's feeling very festive in here, isn't it? This feels too much because the last Christmas show that we did was the non-Christmas Christmas show yeah. in November. We had actual Santa on that show, though. We did. We yeah. did. We yeah. had we had a Santa prop on that show. And the whole point of doing the non-Christmas Christmas show was to say that it was too soon. We're not ready for Christmas. And now it looks like we have vomited Christmas. <laughs> Christmas all over this room. We are ready for yeah. Christmas right now. It's incredible. I mean, in terms of the what's happening here in Palmer Santa State, it's amazing. I yeah. love it. Uh, but the Santa's Best Train Express is pretty much exactly what it says on the tin. Uh, it's running until the 23rd of December. But if you missed out and you're listening to this a few days in or whatever, that's why we're here. Because we're bringing you all the magic and... Yep. It's just delightful. So we're going to talk a little bit today about Christmas traditions. We have a gift guide from around the world, which Denise is going to bring you through. A gift. You need to like, (laughs) when you said this to me yesterday, she's like, we have a gift guide from around the world. And I was like, what do you mean? The thing that you looked up. I was like, that's one, one, one gift. But yeah, we have a gift from around the world. We have a gift um, from around the world. Uh, But I suppose first off, this is going to be going out on the 22nd of December. So by then, Denise surely you're set for Christmas. You have your Christmas shopping. It's all together. Like, surely. We'll really focus on that word because I don't know. So are, you're praying. A, are you a last minute gal? Yeah, I went into town earlier this week and it was pandemonium. I had a winter jacket on. My bra strap kept falling down. I was like pushed through crowds. It was just sweat. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like... Will I go in and do it again? Hopefully, surely by the 22nd. Yeah. But we don't know. We're looking to future Denise and hoping that she has her shit together. Yeah. I don't think anybody enjoy. Like, do people enjoy Christmas shopping? I, I don't. love the idea of it. Like, yeah. I think it's magical. A hot chocolate, everything. But the reality is you're too hot for a hot chocolate. The crowds are just crazy. Yeah. And yeah, it's a lot. A lot of cues. I love the of idea queue. of finishing my Christmas shopping. Yeah. And surely, if you're excited about something being over then you don't enjoy it. I don't know. I, like, do you ever have that panic when you're in a store and you're looking at, like, let's say loads of jumpers and you're trying to think of something to get your dad and then you, like, pick up four and then you put them back down and then you run across the shop and then you end up picking up something really silly because yeah. you're like, I just need something. Like, that happens to me yeah. on the tenfold with every person that I have to shop for. I also get Christmas shopping envy when I'm in the process of Christmas shopping because there's always Moira who's running around Argos and knows exactly what she's getting yeah. and you're just sitting there going, oh my God, sh- stop it. I don't know. I'm just browsing. Like, I don't really go in with a set defined list sometimes I see something and I go I'm gonna buy that and the problem is Maura goes in with a set defined she list definitely and she's that's had why the list she's, since Halloween she does and she has everything pre-booked and pre-ordered so she's going in like supermarket sweep and just yeah. whipping them up yeah this is it so you were doing it wrong we've, we've turned a corner and we're, we're starting to sound a little grinchy so let's get back <laughs> to um the festivities let's get back to the festivities yeah uh, so I suppose in terms of fulfilling your Christmas wish Denise I wanted to extend your palette a little bit and I wanted you to broaden your horizons when it comes to Christmas food because I'm glad you knew that was my wish so thank you (laughs) (laughs) I think in Ireland we have a set kind of food list that we always go to when it comes to Christmas like everybody I I've never really heard of somebody who gets like crazy when it comes to Christmas food it's all the same stuff that your mom or your dad Mm -hmm. wheel out every year and it's lovely and we love it all but I kind of wanted to see a few different things I for example have never tried eggnog either have I but I've seen it in movies and tv shows since the dawn of time so I wanted to see whether or not we could try some stuff whether we'd enjoy it or not obviously people who are watching it will be able to see us try these things but if you're listening on audio you're going to be able to hear it yeah which is the dream people eating yeah. In your ear. In your ears. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't think of anything better. Yeah, I know. Fantastic. Mm. Okay, so we're starting off with Twinkies, which means absolutely nothing. Like, it's nothing to do with Christmas. 
But I've just never tried Twinkies before. Yeah, and I think it was one of those store panic buys where yeah. you saw them and you were thinking, well, we'll just incorporate this into the show somehow because Twinkies. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, a little bit of history on the Twinkie. Uh, they were invented in Schiller Park, Illinois. <laughs> on April 6th, nothing to do with Christmas. April 6th, 1930 by James Alexander DeWar. A baker. Very early. Uh, yeah, very early. A mm. baker for the Continental Baking Company. That's, that's, that's literally all, that's okay, all I have. Cool. Okay. That's, all I, that's all I have on the Twinkie situation. Okay, so we have sample some, it. We have some Twinkies here. This is the piece of history, 1930. Can sticks to the plate, that's a bit creepy. <laughs> You've had this before, right? Yeah. You've had a Twinkie. I've had it in California where I was trying to immerse myself in their culture. But okay. now that I'm here in Santa's house, I don't know am I that pushed on eating it. So for our, before you eat it, Denise, for our listeners who are listening at the moment, let's describe. Okay, so smells like absolutely nothing. I was <laughs> going to say the same thing. <laughs> Feels kind of moist, like my, like my hand is wet. Yeah, no, my hand is a bit sticky. A bit sticky. Um, it doesn't look appealing. I'm not gonna lie. No. Nope. Uh, and I think we've spoken enough. So let's just go on. It's ahead. Wide and short. <laughs> mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we probably shouldn't have edited at the same time. That was a bad idea. <laughs> Both of us like oh. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Twinkies are grand. It tastes a little stale. Do you remember before we started and you were like, oh, maybe we should have water. And I was like, no, that's fine. Yeah. And that's the first. I regret it. Yeah. But do people I- really enjoy those? Yeah. Really? Yeah, Twinkies are like a thing. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. I don't like them at all. No. No. Like, I Wouldn't could be able to finish that. No, I don't think I'd want to eat the whole one now. Absolutely not. Let's get on to some actual Christmas stuff. So your job was to hunt down and find some panettone. Yeah. Which turns out smells absolutely disgusting, but can yep. you give us something, a little bit of history as to what that is? Everybody in this room, Colm and Gary, who are here with us shooting, they all knew what Panettone was. Everybody in the office knew what it was as well. I thought it was a shampoo, so I have no idea what it's it is. Pantene, to begin with. Um, Panettone, <laughs> I actually found out when I was researching it that like people in Ireland have it for Christmas sometimes. People in the UK do. It's like all over Europe, It's but it did originate in Italy. So Panettone is an Italian type of sweet bread originally from Milan and usually prepared and enjoyed for Christmas and New Year. Now, the coolest thing about this, right, is how Panettone supposedly came to be. Now, we're not sure if it actually did, but its origin is the stuff of legend. The name is believed to be a shortened form of Panditonio, Tonio's bread, from the story of a poor Milanese baker who invented the loaf as a dowry for his daughter after she fell in love with a nobleman. What? Wait. Yeah. So this bread was going to be the money with which this man exchanged his daughter for. Yeah. And that's a sweet story. That's a fabulous story. It's like, a great story. It's not like, oh, it was just accidentally came to be. Like this, Okay, so he this, was trying to make a sweet, sweet bread, bread for his sweet, sweet daughter. <laughs> is a dowry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and so it stays fresh for, for 45 days. Let's just focus on that. 45 days. Doesn't I think it's because fresh. of the like fermenta- fermentation. Okay. Process. What ingredients are we looking at? Um, we have got. Oh, wait now. That smells like alcohol. Yeah, I don't know if there's alcohol in it. Oh, wait now. That's straight up whiskey vibes. Butter, plump raisins kneaded into dough, cooked in the oven, and hung upside down to cool. Oh. But it does. I feel like ours might have a little alky pops in it. Smell that. Yeah, no, that's very strong. That's liquor. Yeah. I'm driving. Okay, let's try it. Nope. <laughs> no, oh. I think it's actually raisins that we're smelling. That was very strong. It reminds me of barn brack. Do you know what I mean? Like, people mm. that like raisins are the devil, aren't they? They um, truly are. They're a bit slimy like for my taste. Like, who buys a packet of raisins and thinks, mmm, great snack? Yeah. Not, a, not a huge fan um <laughs> Not a, a sweet story though and also a little bit of history so that was italy so so far we've covered off america did we for no reason <laughs> uh italy um it's time to go back to america i believe because okay. this is the main event this is eggnog this is what we're all here to see this is what we're all here the to money do maker. so uh, a little bit of history on eggnog um it is a milk punch or also it's known as an egg milk punch. Uh, It's a rich, chilled, sweetened, dairy-based beverage, traditionally made with milk, cream, sugar, whipped egg whites, and egg yolks, um, which gives it a frothy texture, and it also gives it its name. In some contexts, distilled spirits, such as brandy, rum, whiskey, or bourbon. Bourbon? Bourbon? Bourbon. Bourbon. Are added to the drink. Uh, Throughout Canada and the States, eggnog is traditionally consumed over the Christmas season. 
uh, from late November until the end of the holiday season, eggnog has also gained massive popularity in Australia. And there is the bad boy right there. I couldn't reach your glass. So I to be honest with you, we you. both have a glass each for yeah. this eggnog situation. But honestly, like, do we really? I'm not going to have that much. And can I also <laughs> say, right, that's the panettone coming back up on you now. I told her to get a glass of water. Um, milk punch. <laughs> While you're choking up a lung, I'm just going to say milk punch sounds absolutely rancid. The I'm fact okay. that we're going to eat anything that's or drink anything mm. that sounds like that scares the life out of me. Um, yeah, they gave a little bit of direction on the back of this fake looking eggnog on what how to serve it. And they say you can make eggnog French toast, which honestly, I couldn't think of anything more horrific. And an eggnog pound cake as well. Um, so let's open this. Now, we're both okay, holding mics, that? so we're going to adjust ourselves accordingly. Talk us through the smell before you pour, please. <clears throat> I'm terribly nervous. Um, <laughs> there's not really a smell. Everything's a bit smellless. I don't know what's going on. Okay, let me um, give a whiff. Give a whiff. Yeah, like there is a bit of milk. I can smell milk. There oh, that tastes like bad milk. That I, that doesn't taste you like smell bad milk. That doesn't taste like that doesn't smell like good milk. No, that's like not gone off, but like coming right up to the expiry date. Milk. Let's give it a little pour. Okay, I'd love see. if I could hear a chug from this. No, That's browner than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> okay. Oh, that last. Yeah, let's keep our hearts and minds open. It's the Christmas season. It's a lot browner than I thought it was going to be. And very thick. T-H-I-C-C thick. You know, it's kind of like, I don't know, it kind of smells a bit like Bailey's. Anyway, let's do it. We're not putting any alcohol in it because nope. it is 10 a.m. In the morning. Cheers. Cheers. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. I, I mean, know I'm, what to say. I'm not mad at that. I'm, I wouldn't drink any more than that one sip. I thought that was okay. <laughs> no, you didn't. Again. Sorry, we foresaw that this was going to happen. I'm just joking. I mean, did we not? <laughs> okay, hold on. <laughs> Okay, I like know what it tastes like. Would you have a glass of that with ice? No, I wouldn't. But okay. if there was alcohol in it and there was ice, maybe. That's not too bad at all. It reminds me of, do you remember those like yogurty milkshakes that you could get that sometimes had a banana flavor? Okay, get it's the banana. banana, -y, I get the banana. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm not mad at that at all. Okay, okay let's do some Phones nougat. Up for America. Yeah, we've got a lot more to get through, so yep. let's go, go on to the nougat. So, nougat. Would you pronounce the tea? I wouldn't. <laughs> anyway, also known as turon, is a Christmas dessert of Spanish origin. You cannot go to a Christmas market in Spain without seeing nougat everywhere. It's made from honey, egg whites, and nuts, which are usually toasted almonds. I think we have hazelnuts in our one. Um, and it can be sold as a rectangular slab or come as a cake between two thin cookie waffles. Now, this is the one when I was um, setting out these gorgeous plates for us, you know, my Christmas wish, according to you. Mm. Um, nougat was the one that I was like, yes, queen, it smells good. Do you know what? It smells like a Milky Way. Yeah. Like uh, Milky Way. That's all I can describe it as. Okay, mm -hmm. let's do it. No. Not opposed to that. No. <laughs> I don't think we have the same taste palette. That's awful. I think that's kind of, that's no. kind of slick. No. It's like so, there's sh more sugary than the Twinkie. <laughs> like it's literally so... That's the nuts that you're getting, though. Mmm. That is sweet. I like this. Okay, we're racing through now. Let's move on to the um, the chestnut, which I'm not excited about because it literally just looks like someone hocked it up on the plate. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is that, Denise? The chestnut looks like baby poo. It really <laughs> like, does. What it is that? It looks like a little baby had a little defecate on the table. Like, it really looks vile. Yeah, it's so gross. Anyway, <laughs> a chestnut is believed, no, it is believed that ancient Greeks were the first to introduce and cultivate chestnuts in the Mediterranean region about 3,000 years ago. However, mm. right, the idea of having them for Christmas supposedly started in the United States. Right. As well as a little bit of eggnog. Um, a very popular food there in the 18th and 19th century. And of course, Nat King Cole's song, which opens with the line, chestnuts, chestnuts roasting, roasting on, on an, an open, open fire. fire. These chestnuts aren't roasting. They're lying limp and, and <laughs> lifeless on our plate with These some kind of gel like jelly look around look like them. literal shahid, <laughs> don't <laughs> they? Why is there jelly encasing them? And they're candied okay, chestnuts. Cool. Okay, well, let's, let's do it. But actually... No. <laughs> so gross. The texture of that felt like <laughs> I'm a celeb Bush Tucker trial vibe. 
That was disgusting. That is so disgusting. That, like kangaroo ball or something. Yeah. What was the guy's name who sang the song about the chestnuts? Nat King Cole. He's, a, he's lying. He's That's lying. Awful. He didn't candy his. Okay, maybe it was because they're candied. <laughs> let's not um, let's not give out to them too much. That was awful. I'm feeling a bit ill. Yeah, I'm not liking anything we're eating. Okay, we're moving on. This is the final one because we, we have to move on to Christmas traditions. We've got some lovely ones to share. Um, mince pies. So basically, this is our, our final thing. Uh, it's a sweet pie of English origin filled yeah. with a mixture of dried fruits and spices called mince meat. <laughs> Um, that is traditionally served during the Christmas season in much of the English-speaking world. Its ingredients are traceable to the 13th century when we're turning European crusaders. Now, Denise, you are a vegetarian. Yeah. You thought that mince meat was mince meat. Yeah, I mean, easy mistake. <laughs> Why use the same name? Just <laughs> riddle me this. Also, it didn't say suitable for vegetarians on the box. Does that frighten me a bit? Yeah, it does. I'm not going to lie. Am I still going to try this mince meat pie? What are they called? Mince pies? Mince pies, because it's the mince meat is, as Colin well, said. I gave it another name. Do you it's know a what mixture I mean? of dried fruits and spices. It has nothing to do with meat. I also effing hate mince pies, but anyway. Oh, I wish there was something other than eggnog here. That I'm I not going <laughs> to lie. I just had the shortbread. I wasn't <laughs> feeling it. <laughs> I wasn't, if that's real mince, I'm not biting into that. It's not real mince, I'm not Denise. taking the risk. And please, going forward, future Denise, don't say that to anybody. I, but you told me that maybe back in the day it was real mince. Ma- I think that that's where I get it from. Hold on, let me just see. <laughs> uh, mince pies at Christmas tide were traditionally shaped in an oblong shape to resemble a manger and were often topped with a depiction of the Christ child. It's always been fruit and spices. I don't think it's ever been mince. Okay. Yeah. As, as long as I know that, I'll go forward with knowledge. Absolutely, okay. yeah. Okay. Well, that's the end of our tasting portion. Um, I feel a little ill. Yeah. Don't yeah. feel well. Don't put everything together. What's but your, star, your star food? Ooh, the Danish cookie, which we didn't get to, which also doesn't have a meaning. <laughs> and we just liked it. I was surprised by the eggnog, to be honest. I was expecting a much okay. gloopier and disgusting. That tastes like banana milkshake, honestly. Okay. It's I quite nice. A bit of Bailey's, Bailey's vibe. I'm going to go with the nougat. No way. I'm going to have Christmas in Spain next year. Hello. Yeah, I do like that. Mm. That was our attempt to kind of broaden our minds a little yep. bit. Um, and ultimately, we're just going to feel a little bit ill for the rest of the day. But uh, I suppose we should move on to the gift guide now. So <laughs> The gift guide. Uh, the gift guide. The gift guide. So, Denise, I tasked you with um, getting gift guides from around the globe. And it was going to be this beautiful <laughs> section of the show. And everybody would be like, wow, those kids in... Jamaica, I get amazing presents. What is it? You found like apples in China. Okay, first it. of all, I was like to you when I was researching foods from around the world, I was like, oh my God, did you know this thing that I'm not going to reveal yet about China? And you went, that's really cool. And then when we had a meeting about this <laughs> show, you said, so we're doing gift guides from around the world. So, yeah. So anyway, I, maybe I produced it more in my brain. Emphasis on the gift okay. guide <laughs> um, from China. So yeah. Whether this is to be believed or not, I don't know. So I don't want anyone to come after me because this same site that I got this from also told me that on Christmas Day, Irish people bake loaves of bread for each other. And sometimes everyone in a household gets a loaf of bread on Christmas Day. It's I've never heard that. No, either have I. So I'm a bit like sceptical as so to what I'm about to they say. They get up and like in the morning on Christmas Day, they get up and first things first, they they bake no, bread what I for think everybody. Is, is, is thy neighbour would bake loaves of bread and then they give them like everyone swaps breads okay is what they're kind of trying to get at which okay. um never yeah, i that. won't mention the site good to know um but yeah they, that's what they said oh. so um yeah so supposedly allegedly most stores in china will sell apples wrapped in colorful paper on christmas eve so people can buy them and give them as gifts why the reason behind this the word for christmas eve in chinese is ping yan yu yi I actually have that phonetically spelled, which sounds very similar to the Chinese word for apple, which is pinguo. <laughs> and these two things are then brought together. And that's the reason for gifting colorful apples. That's nice. Yeah. I like that. I also loved your attempt at um, Chinese. Ping yang yi and pinguo. Yeah, like honestly at the her desk there yesterday, all we could hear was that person on, is a Google Translate yeah. you're using? Yeah. Ping yang yi, ping yang yi. And I was really trying to play it louder and louder and I didn't have my headphones. Yeah. And I was getting looks. It was very, it was I was very getting annoying. looks. Um, it's a nice tradition, though, that they do in China, I suppose. I, I kind of asked the team about Christmas traditions because that's one of the things that I 
love hearing about. Yeah. I love hearing about what other families do on Christmas because I find it so interesting. Like my family, for example, every Christmas Eve, we have chicken curry that my dad makes mm. and chipper chips that my auntie picks up on the way. And then my whole family come over and we do like a Chris Kindle with the family and we sing carols. So that's like, it's just our kind of Christmas tradition. It always has to be chicken curry. I don't know why. And like nobody really remembers when that started either. I like and we that always though. make That's our really nice. Yeah, and we always make our little cousin, who's 31 now, like she's not little anymore, but we always make her stand in the middle of the room and sing Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer. Yeah, so. I love that she still commits to that. Oh, she hates it. There's oh, also really? younger kids now as well, and they, they all know that they have to stand back when Jenny's about to sing Rudolph, because she used to do it when she was a kid, and it just infuriated us. Um, so I asked some of the team about some lovely Christmas traditions that they would want to share with us, and... Uh, Anna Daly, who works for her, said, and this is lovely, I'm just going to read it, like how she wrote it. So when I was little on Christmas Eve, my family and I would open the windows in my parents' bedroom, light a candle, and sit on the windowsill listening and looking out for Santa. We don't expect the sound of bells so much now as we did when we were little, but we still light the candle and have a look out the open window every year before going to bed. That's really cute. Isn't that so sweet? Oh my God, I love that. It's so magical. Yeah, now yeah. It, it goes on. Um... Now, this one I was less enthused about. Also on Christmas morning, my sister and I have to make my parents coffee and wait for them to finish it before we all go down to open presents. This obviously comes from them trying to get a tiny bit of extra sleep when we were little and used to wake them up at 5 a.m. after they had stayed up late wrapping Santa's presents. The tradition has stuck, though, so Christmas morning always means coffee in bed for them. Oh, they're very smart parents. They I would are. have murdered my parents if they didn't get up the minute I slammed open that door. Like, honestly. Like, I used to wake up at like 4 a.m. and I used to go straight into them and I was like, no. Yeah. And then they used to do this thing to me as well and they're like, I don't think he's come yet. And I was like, no, we'll definitely go down and check. <laughs> like, we, obviously. No, 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 no. I, another hour. And I used to be like, oh my God. I used to be livid. Yeah. yeah. My parents were pretty good. Like, we would, me and my brother would wake up ridiculously early. Like, sometimes 3, 4 a.m. And they would actually always be very good about just, like, letting them go down and, and seeing it. We'd always have to go down as a family. Uh, but now it's just flip reverse. Like, my dad will, like, me and my brother always go home for Christmas. Obviously, everybody doesn't. Uh, he wakes us up. And makes us go down and it's like maybe 8 a.m. And it's just like, oh, no, you have a little bit of a chore. Christmas Eve hangover going on. Yeah. And it's all like, you know, has Santa come? We have to stand at the top of the hallway and all wait for each other to come out and then walk down like I'm 33 years of age. <laughs> like this still happens. My brother's 34. Do you know what I mean? We have to walk I down. I just imagine you matching gym oh, jams. Like. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. My dad is like, I think he came. Um. Anyway, I loved Anna's one of lighting the candle. Yeah, yeah, really, really, really nice. Really we never did anything like that. It was more like we have to leave the whiskey out for Santa then you have to get to bed, you know, so. Whiskey. Oh, yeah, Santa loved a whiskey in our house. Oh, yeah. Santa like milk in mine. But <laughs> <laughs> Santa loved a whiskey. <laughs> okay, um, Kathy Donahue uh, as well, the editor of her. As a child, I always remember my Nana making turkey soup every Christmas and we would talk about it for the other 11 months of the year. Mm, Nana's, I'm just saying, because mm, I'm thinking of turkey. Oh, yeah. Nana's not here anymore, but mom makes it now and it's just a special. It's a Kalaki, I may have said that wrong, family special. I hope it lives on for a few generations yet. My abilities in the kitchen need to improve first. I love it when I hear about what people do with their turkey as well. Turkey curry is very big in our family. Like, you like a curry. I love a mm. curry, love a whiskey. Like, yeah. Absolutely. But we've never really been into turkey sandwiches. You know, the way people froth yeah. at the mouth about their turkey sandwich the next day. I actually find turkey when it's dry in a sandwich like a little bit dry. So I would prefer to just <laughs> put it in I a feel curry. Like turkey's always dry, so maybe that's why you like things. Turkey's a not always dry. A bit more saucy. My now. mother's turkey mm. is never. Oh, one of the weirdest traditions. That's definitely a lie. One on. of the weirdest traditions in our family is that my mother doesn't cook for 364 days out of the year. My dad cooks everything in the house, and then on Christmas Day she cooks Christmas dinner every single year. It's the only time she cooks. She gets the spotlight then, doesn't she? She really yeah. does. Yeah, Your it's poor a, dad. It's a big kind of. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, guess, I guess she likes it. Ham sandwiches from the Christmas ham and Bailey's coffees on Christmas Eve is another big one too. Just thinking of all the traditions center around food. That's what Cathy said. Oh, as they well. always like, do. They kind of do yeah. a lot. Yeah. I mean, uh, Cassie Stokes was telling us she didn't write one into me, but she goes and gets a tie on Chinese on Christmas. So... Fair play. Fair play. Um, we have another one that came in from Melissa, uh, who also works for her. I don't know if anyone does this, but my grandmother 
would have us light candles on Christmas Eve and leave them in the window so that our loved ones who passed away could find their way home for Christmas Day. I still do it to this day. My grandmother passed away in 2013. So it's kind of come full circle because now I light them for her. That's really, really sweet. Aww. That kind of reminds me of the Mexican tradition where people put out pictures of their loved ones on the day of the dead so that they can come home. They can yeah. like pass through or pass back or whatever. Yeah. What's yeah. your favorite part of Christmas? I think the build up to Christmas. I always find that once Christmas hits, then you're like, oh, like it, like the excitement kind of dwindles a little bit. I think the days leading up to Christmas, I love the 23rd. Like we go to town. Um, on the 23rd it's a massive night out in Mallow County Cork really yeah massive night Yeah. but then you'll be hung over for Christmas Eve it's it's all a blur you really you just pull it? it together yeah, yeah you do you do blur, yeah. but yeah everyone wears qu- Christmas jumpers and you do like all the pubs in the town and you bump into everyone you know which is just so lovely so yeah, yeah. that would be our Chris- that would be our big Christmas tradition so I think the 23rd is the night I look forward to the most and also because it's so close to Christmas, you're just so excited for Christmas. Yeah. And you're on holidays and you're not working. And, yeah. you know, it's lovely. It's really, really nice. It is interesting when you go back home for Christmas. And now when I say, like, I put on, is it Chris Rhea? Chris Rhea driving home for Christmas? Oh, I don't yeah, know how to pronounce yeah. it. But, like, I live five minutes away from my parents' house. Literally, I live five minutes away. So my drive is incredibly short. But I love the idea of everybody yeah. going home for Christmas and then seeing people that for whatever reasons they've emigrated or they've moved away or and you just don't see them and then like you see people who were in like your second class yeah and you're just and like I love hey, hearing about what people are doing you now. look the same yeah like what yeah. are you working as are I you know. kids yeah most of them are, are married with kids now in, in my situation anyway so yeah. uh another year no kids <laughs> I'm still here um but yeah no that's good and I suppose uh another thing that we wanted to do for our listeners of Girls With Goals was just kind of Send some Christmas messages and send a little bit of cheer, cheer out there love. as well. Yeah. So we put it up on our Instagram and we got a few uh, Christmas messages. So let me just pull them up. It sounds... No, I think the ha- house is haunted. I'm <laughs> going to put that out there now. Really? Where we are? Yeah. The door creaked a minute ago as well and I was like spooky. Really? And the windows are making crackling sounds. I'm I sure. I think Santa's house is possessed. Genuinely. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah. And um, we got a message in from Needy Nice at Needy Nice on Instagram to my best friend, husband, and daddy. I hope you have a jolly holly Christmas. Uh, smiley face, Santa face, heart, love you, and three X's. So nice. That's really cute. We got another one in from Luloves.ie. Wishing all my amazing customers of 2019 a happy Xmas and a big thank you for all of your support. Love that. Love yes. that. Business. Um, there's one in there from me, and I just said you're pretty, which makes absolutely no sense because I just saw it on the, her Instagram and I just and got excited. you just excited. wanted to reply. I just wanted to reply, yeah. Block up the fuse, uh, good girl. Yeah, CCC Cooney uh, says Merry Christmas to all my friends and family. Wishing you all a lovely time. Linda O'Neill said happy Christmas to all my gorgeous girls 27 years of friendship and counting and a purple love heart oh well, they are really sweet it's just one of those nice massive times massive shout out to all those people yeah, yeah absolutely and thanks for getting in touch it's one of those times as well like everybody is just in a better mood yeah. aren't they mm-hmm. it's a really nice time of year for people to just be like do you know what everything's everything's gonna be okay yeah and it's a time of giving and spending time with friends and family yeah. catching up with people you might not have seen the whole year round it, yeah it's just a wholesome yeah wholesome time it's also a time that I always think about people who are less fortunate mm. and people who are not in you know the situations that a lot of us are in and so it's always a nice time to kind of reflect and think about that as well and just remind yourselves that like a lot of the time during the year like I mean everybody moans and everybody bitches and we talk about how tough our lives are and how tough our jobs are except for Gary who's like the yeah Gary's full of joy 24-7 Gary who's here with us is full of joy 24-7 third year running sound this lad in the office but like you know I mean it's like Christmas every day for him and I feel like I want to almost emulate that a little bit more maybe we need to try woolly hats maybe like we need to bring Christmas into yeah. every season sorry just a slight slight side note on Gary we were walking by this spire which is just around the corner <laughs> from our office the other day <laughs> and Gary was on the street helping a guy like fix his car yeah. I'm presuming and it was a guy that worked in the in spur. The spur he was yeah. like in his spur uniform and Gary yeah. was fixing his Gary car was bonnet like just open like bonnet open like going in there I was like honestly Gary like maybe Gary is Santa Claus you're so nice maybe oh no. there's the ex- <laughs> he's being exposed <laughs> But that's it. I'm going to try to do that. You know, like yeah. it's not the time to talk about resolutions. It's not the time to talk about what we're going to do next year. But I'm going to try and maybe, you know, just be a little bit. Oh, 
oh my god it is haunted everything's haunted the <laughs> boxes just fall behind me i actually froze so much i'm terrified the house is genuinely haunted i'm <gasps> gonna actually maybe poo poo in my panties what? i'm not messing this is terrifying what if okay it's santa i can sit here what for another 20 santa? minutes i'm glad we're at the end of the show are we on the nice list though this is we the thing want to be. well i have to say denise this is your this is your last day before Christmas. I know, how exciting. So exciting. Um, and we, every year, and her do a Chris Kindle. Um, and we're doing it tomorrow, actually. Yes. That's when we're doing it. So, so exciting. But you're not here tomorrow. I I'm actually so sad that I'm missing it. Yeah. yeah. So, guess who's your Chris Kindle? Wait, you're my Chris Kindle. <laughs> Happy Chris Kindle. Oh, this is so cute. <laughs> You. Like not totally unexpected though, because when we were in the car on the way here, you were like, "Am I bringing this Brian Thomas bag?" And I was like, "Yes, you're bringing the Brian Thomas bag." Yeah, but I just presumed it was your like change of knickers or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, open it. Oh, Go on. Oh, okay. Let's do it. You have it not a bit now. I do. Yeah. This is so exciting. And just talk us through it. Talk us okay. through it. So, we have absolutely key a pair of. Holiday luxury socks from Calvin Klein. Calvin Hello. Klein, because you love a label. I love a label. And I've just yeah, noticed I that the price do. is on them. Oh. So I'm going to take them I'll back. I'll just keep going through these while yeah. you hide yeah. your shade. Um, Percy Pigs, key. Yes. Love a good jelly. Yeah. A lot of paper in here. I'm going to just <laughs> throw that down. Brian here. Thomas for you. I did actually buy your gift in Brian Thomas. It's not just a reused bag, by the way. No. Oh, for God's sake, I ripped off the wrong part. Everything is so nicely wrapped. And a cute little Santa mug. This there is the cutest go. thing ever. I don't ever. think it's a Santa mug. I think it's a penguin. Well, a pink, but it's a Christmas mug yeah, is what I mean. Yeah, it's a Christmas mug, yeah. <laughs> Thank there you, you so much for these. This is the fabulous little gift ever. Yeah, happy Chris I'm Kindle. Obsessed. Thank you. Chris Kindles are tough one now. So you're going to be giving Chris your Chris Kindle to someone today. I am. I have it's not it me, in the is office. It? It's not you. Okay, you can tell me who it is. If this it is future. So. Oh, yeah, it's Kathy. I have Kathy. Oh, okay. What'd you get her? Kathy is our editor, and I got her actually a really... Thoughtful gift, I think, in my mind. I think everything uh, I get is thoughtful. Hello. Yeah, yours is thoughtful. This is like Calvin Klein. <laughs> um, what I got, um, Kathy, was she just got engaged. So I got her, you know, in like the middle of the Ilex Center, they have these stands where you can get um, decorations with names on them. Yes. Yeah, so I got her one for her and Connor, her Aww. soon-to-be husband, saying engaged 2019. It's two little, are they... Oh yeah, it's a man and woman, like carrying oh. a little Christmas tree. You know, Amazing. Like it's good that you're getting house. it in today as well, because... I feel like they're going to get a lot of Christmas related um, engagement gifts. Yeah, agreed. Them, so well, yeah. thank you for these. No, of course. They're course. house socks. You only wear them in the house, obviously. Yeah, well, I know I wouldn't. <laughs> Where would I be wearing those big socks to? <laughs> <laughs> thank um, you so, so much. That, That's fabulous. That is all the time that we have. Thank you to everybody for joining us for our Christmas special. Um, thank you for letting us be surrounded by these amazing Christmas gifts. Thank you to Parma Stan House Estate as well. Uh, Santa Train Express, if you missed it this year, holy moly go and look at it next year because i thought you're gonna go ho 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 <laughs> the way you set that up please go and check them out for next year because it genuinely is like we've been having the most fun here today aside from the fact that we think it is haunted so yeah. we might just uh mosey and it's probably just this room so don't worry about it too much uh, it's definitely santa in the corner gary it could be gary yeah. we were talking about him too much and then he made the presence <laughs> move to shut us up <laughs> I get that. <laughs> um, okay, from all of us here at Girls With Goals, <laughs> Merry Christmas and we'll and see Merry you. Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> well, we'll just do that. Let's say Merry Christmas together as our no, clean No, I wanted to do Merry Christmas like the JLS guy. But Merry Christmas. Let's just do Merry okay. Christmas on three as our clean out. Thank you so much and Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> 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 I just need you to do it at the same way. <laughs> Level as me, please. Did I go too high or did you go too low? <laughs> Hi. Okay. okay, three, three two, two, one. one. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> okay, that's it. Bye.